Hello, my dudes. Bridezilla here. First of all, let's talk about the elephant in the room. My fan mail wall! Isn't it beautiful? Okay, let's keep talking. Oh no! So as you can probably tell, I have a wedding to go to today. It's one of my dad's students' weddings. One of his PhD students is tying the knot, and we were gracefully invited. It's a traditional Indian wedding. I've never gone to one, so I'm excited. It's gonna be a new experience. Now obviously I would wear this dress, but there's a little bit of a rule when you go to weddings. You're not allowed to wear white, because you're not supposed to look better than the bride, and that's kind of an issue for me, because I look better than everyone. So instead, I opted for this little pink satin number from Aritzia. I mean, Aritzia's coming in hot for the millionth time here. And then on my feet, I am donning my sparkly prom shoes. I want to wear these again. I don't care if it matches. So shut up. The wedding starts at 4 p.m. It's just past 11 right now, and we have a lot of things to do. Not really, but I know procrastination will set in at one point, so we just better get a head start right now. Hello, my dudes. So usually I don't do anything in the way of skincare when I'm getting ready to go somewhere, but here's the thing. Somebody sent to my P.O. box this avocado face mask. There is no question that I have to do this. It would be offensive not to. I've never done a face mask if my face explodes. No video ever, so have fun with that. Oh my god, it's in my mouth. My eczema is definitely gonna throw a temper tantrum in like 20 minutes. I feel like I look ridiculous. I can't really see myself right now because I'm not wearing my glasses, so I'm gonna take a bit of a break, let this dry, let my skin absorb all the avocado magic, and then well, I'll see you guys in a bit. The skin of a mule, the fur of a sheep, the scent of a skunk. What do these things have in common, you may be wondering? Nothing, I just wanted to sound cool. So I was just waiting for the face mask to work its magic and burn my skin off when I realized how ravenous I was. So I decided to make what I like to call bootleg mac and cheese because I'm pretty sure that if Gordon Ramsay saw what the heck I was making, he would have a full-fledged heart attack. To start, you fill a pot with water and boil it. Then we get to the noodles. I like to use mung noodles, which are pretty much normal noodles without the carbs and tons of protein. Be careful with this stuff though because it's a fat mess to handle. The noodles are as fragile as China and they break if you fart in their direction. Usually 50 grams of this stuff is more than enough for one person, so take that and put it in to the pot. Do I wait for the water to boil? Obviously not. Who did you think I was? Now things are about to get really intense. Take one singular ovary, I mean egg, and shredded cheese of your choice. You're gonna need about 25 grams of this. Be careful because it's very tempting to eat it. Cheese truly is a godsend if you- th Oh my god, the noodles are alive! This happens every time, Joanne! When your noodles look like little green worms, it's time to strain it, and then back onto the stove it goes. We're gonna have to work fast here, so pay attention, dudes. Crack that egg into your noodles. I'm sorry for the disgusting visual, and stir it quickly or else the egg will get stuck to the bottom. Then slap on that cheese and keep mixing it until it melts. When the bottom of the pot is mostly clean, your abomination is ready. You can add some salt if you want, transfer it to a bowl, and it's ready to devour. I have to admit, it looks like a mess, but this is the best mess you will ever eat. It's scrumptious and tastes like regular pasta. I mean, every time I eat this, I scrape the bowl so clean I barely have to wash it afterwards. Hello there. Now we're gonna do the nails. Now here's the thing, okay? A couple days ago, I fell down a bit of a rabbit hole on YouTube, and I found this trend where people would like rub these powders on their nail, and it would just be metallic like a mirror. To me, it seemed unnecessary, extremely extra, and exactly what I need to do. I bought the whole getup, the powder. Like, this stuff is expensive. It's like $5 for this little thing. Who's scamming you people? I've set up another camera here. There are my beautiful digits. I'm sorry if my fingers make you uncomfortable. They make me uncomfortable, so join the party. So I'm gonna start with this gel. Ah! You see, I'm a professional on this channel. I use two camera angles. We're reaching new levels of sophistication here. Okay, now I need to shine this light on it, and I'm kind of terrified that I'm gonna get skin cancer. Okay. Wow, my fingers are burning. And now we're gonna go in with this white gel polish. Looks like this. It smells. <laughs> bad. So here's the thing. Do I need a second coat? Definitely. But I don't have the patience for that. We're just gonna go with the top coat. All of the nail people are shook. All of the makeup people, they're also shook. I'm a booby guru now, so fight me. It's time to get messy. Let me zoom you guys in for the mess that is about to ensue. That didn't work. What? Why isn't this working?
So let me explain what just happened. As you can see, I got it to work. I was using this little silicon tool because I wanted to be all professional. It didn't work. So then I started using my finger and I got this beautiful result. Hi. Hey there. Anyways, I'm gonna do the other hand now and then I'll see you guys when I'm getting my hair done. Hello, my dude. So I have a couple updates to give you. I did my other hand and I kind of messed up a bit because there are some bald spots. Ah! but it's looking pretty good overall. My mom is now doing my hair. After this, I'm just gonna put my dress on, I'm gonna strut my stuff out to the car, and we're gonna drive all the way to that darn wedding. Tonight's gonna be fun. I'm gonna eat a lot of food. I was ready, as ready as I'll ever be, but not gonna lie, the dress was kinda tough to manage. I kept on flashing everyone and their third cousin, so caution would definitely have to be taken that night. My movements would have to be extremely calculated. Give me a second, I have to do some trigonometry. Either way, I was looking like a pink satin cupcake with sparkly shoes to match of course. My mother, her adorable navy blue number was exquisite. She spent days sewing that thing so that it fit her body perfectly. And my dad, he looked like a businessman. Did my mom point out that his suit was too big for him? Yes, but it's part of the look. Right dad? And then I blacked out and suddenly we were in the car, speeding off to the venue. Things were whizzing and happening all around me. But I only realized two things. One, my dress was way too small for my massive guns. They were being strangled. They were screaming for air. The other thing was that this dress was extremely low cut. The risk of my non-existent boobies popping out was immense, so a minuscule safety pin held it together, but don't tell anyone. Before we knew it though, we had arrived, and we, we were more than excited. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we are ready for an Indian wedding. <laughs> Do you have anything to say? No, I don't have no, anything don't have to anything say. To say no. Anyways, we waltzed into the venue, and I immediately went to the washroom because I desperately had to pee. The waterfall was struggling to be contained, if you know what I mean. But with that out of the way, my parents and I loitered in the lobby as we waited for the ceremony to begin. We took in our surroundings. There was a lot going on, but in the best way possible. The waterfall was lovely. The cherry blossom tree was breathtaking. The appetizers had already been laid out, but you weren't allowed to touch them or else the dementors were going to suck your soul straight out of your belly button. Everything was fit for a wedding and a lovely one at that. Oh, hey, look, it's the groom. Everything stopped. The stars, the planets, the cars, my breathing. Wait. We were all congregated around him as they carried out their rituals. Then we all paraded into the main room. The ceremony was underway. First, food. Let me tell you, they really did the most here. There was a large variety of dishes. It was honestly mesmerizing. There were spring rolls, vegetarian cutlets, vegetarian samosas, and whatever the heck this is. Obviously, I took multiple of each. I was here to try everything. That complicated thing I can't pronounce, turns out it was deep fried cottage cheese. I mean, hello, I will take 10, please. You can't go wrong with that. So obviously it tasted heavenly. The vegetable cutlet. At first, they were flavorful, but then flavorful turned into burning levels of spicy. I drowned my pharynx in water, but still kept eating because it was just too good to pass up. Next, the samosas. It was good. Again, deep fried anything is harder to get wrong than it is to get right. My dad even went back for seconds. I'm not one to talk though because I ate more than my fair share, that's for sure. Suddenly, the lights dimmed. Something was happening. We observed as the groom sat on the stage. Everyone was silent. Something was brewing. The doors closed. We were locked in. There was no going back now. The minister was chanting something. Knots were being tied. The doors, they opened and... It was just my dad coming back for thirds. Good job, Rolando. Thanks for being a real party pooper. I guess those veggie cutlets were really screaming his name all the way from the lobby, weren't they? Anyways, once all this gymnastics was over and done with, the bride finally walked in. She was dripping in gold and she looked amazing. Her and her posse slowly made their way to where the groom was seated. Am I being overly descriptive here? I think I'm getting a headache from my own verbose rhetoric. I need an aspirin. It's at this point that I would like to direct your attention to the ceiling nipple lights. They really were eye-catching. They sparkled and glittered like the night sky, really lighting up. Oh my god, there's a fire on the stage. Someone called the fire department. Actually, that was a false alarm. They didn't set the whole building on fire, so I think we're good. And with that, the wedding ceremony was over. Upbeat Bollywood music started playing, immediately sweeping everyone into a happier mood. People were dancing and singing. We were having a blast. My dad especially. He was really getting into the groove of things. I mean, I have to get my graceful dancing from someone, right? Oh, what's that? It's the sound of dinner being served, of course. Again, Again, they really knocked it out of the park with the variety here. There were foods of every color, smell, shape, dimension, you name it, they had it. Again, I took a little bit of everything. I was ready to eat myself silly. And let me tell you, the food was amazing. It was great and so much more flavorful than the acorn squash I usually eat and I was forcing it down and... <sighs> this was when things fell completely apart.
had an allergic reaction. Okay, so listen here, my dudes. This was entirely my fault. I got tough and thought I didn't need to ask the waitresses which foods had nuts. Indian food is known to have peanuts, so I was the one looking like a fool with my lips puffed up and my eyes swelled shut. Now, was it worth it though? Honestly, yes. The food was that good. The stomach ache, not so much, but the flavor, A1. Obviously, I was in no condition to stay at the venue, so we quickly said goodbye to the newlyweds and home we went, where he basked in my pseudo lip injections. And that was it, my dudes. That was a whole thing. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope it tickled your pickle. Ew. Stay funky, stay spunky, and stay spicy, and I'll see you in the next one. Toodles!